What's up guys, it's Cam coming at you from the 2-6. Welcome back to Carolina Fragrance Reviews. Today's gonna be a first impressions of some new releases and not so new releases, but they are absolutely new to me. Stay tuned to get my thoughts. Let's get into this. <laughs> Before I get into these fragrances, I want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor. It's MyFragranceSamples.com. Go to www.MyFragranceSamples.com, enter my discount code CFR15 to get 15% off of all your favorite designer, indie, and niche brands. So as I mentioned, some of these are semi-new, somewhat new, whatever, but they're all new to me and these all were samples that were sent to me by myfragrancesamples.com and stick around to the end and we'll go over a fragrance that actually had been mentioned to me when I reviewed Louis Vuitton Afternoon Swim. If you guys know anything about that, hold your thoughts until we get into that one. First fragrance up is a 2020 release. It is Polo Red Eau de Parfum, and I know I'm sitting here holding it like you can see what it is, but yeah, trust me, that's what it is. As I said, this fragrance was released in 2020. This is actually going to be my very first time smelling. I have not sprayed this one yet. I did spray one of them once, well, actually two of them, once but that's not really I guess you know I want to be transparent so it's uh, somewhat of a first impression but 100% first impression with the polo red eau de parfum okay so the fragrance family is warm and spicy scent type woody spices it says the key notes are red ginger clary sage oil and natural woods it says the fragrance description discover Ralph Lauren polo red eau de parfum where seduction meets sophistication this fragrance brings a new level of luxury to the Polo Red collection, leaving a lasting impression of warm sensuality. We'll see about that. The instant attraction is a modern mix of rich natural woods, ginger, and aromatic sage. Sounds good to me. And I usually like testing these on skin. I have these little test strips here, but I know some of you guys like are kind of anti that. Um, being that I have four, yeah, I've got four fragrances, so we'll just spray different areas. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do it on the tester and on the skin just to see how much difference it is. Got a nice opening, a little bit spicy. That ginger really comes through. Not bad, not bad at all. I mean, it does seem, you know, on the test strip like it has a little more oomph. I actually have the original red. I should have actually brought that out to show you guys that, but I think I've actually had that in a video before. It does smell a lot sweeter on the skin. If you guys have smelled Polo Red, this seems to be uh, maybe a little bit richer and deeper, slightly sweeter version of the original red. It does seem like it's going to, you know, have a little more depth than that original red, but the DNA of the OG is definitely present. I actually enjoy this more because I wasn't like overly impressed with Polo Red, even though I have a big bottle, it's half empty. I probably bought it when it first came out. That fragrance has been in my collection for a very long time. As you guys may have saw in a recent review where I was talking about the Golden Blend of the Polo Blue, I felt that that was really good. And I also uh, recently smelled Deep Blue, which I thought was a rather solid release as well. So Polo making a little bit of a comeback here. Yeah. So you can easily sample this just like I have here from myfragrancesamples.com. Or if you go to like Belk, Sephora, any of the retailers, 100 ml or excuse me 125 ml they have here for 99 dollars which uh obviously will be at discounters at some time they may already be there sometimes something will come out and it just kind of does a nose dive and it's at fragrance x and fragrance net fragrance by all those places i mean sometimes literally within a matter of you know 30 to 90 days overall not bad um i'm not like blown away but then again i i don't feel it's crappy either okay next fragrance up is is a 2019 release from Atelier Cologne. This one is Love Osmanthus. Now, up until now, I would have not known what Osmanthus smelled like whatsoever. I have seen it listed in a couple of fragrances. Ashton from Gensense and I actually have a little Osmanthus joke because um, if you haven't like literally smelled it in its raw form, you have no clue what it smells like. So I think that this is probably gonna be a rather good indication on how Osmantha smells. I have sprayed this one one time that I mentioned before, and I was like, huh, not bad. So a little information about Love Osmanthus. Uh, the fragrance family is 
florals, obviously. Scent type is fruity floral. The key notes are osmanthus, cedarwood, and lemon. The fragrance description, osmanthus flower from China, brings peach-like creaminess, which explains that. Wild lemon from Italy adds brightness and warmth. Both grounded by cedarwood from America, sweet, fruity, and floral. So, my first thoughts when I was thinking osmanthus, I thought it would be one of those florals that did not work for me. But then again, that's what we get for assuming sometimes. You know what they say about assuming? You make an ass out of you or me. And in this case, it would be me. So for another spray on here, and that's something that I noticed right out the gates, it had like that peachy creaminess about it, almost uh, slightly like, maybe like a little bit of like a praline vibe or something like that. But this is really, really, really nice. Now, if you're not a fan of like sweet, fresh, and fruity floral fragrances, this might not be for you. This would smell fantastic on a woman on a hot summer day. Some of you dudes, I mean myself included, I can pull off, you know, feminine fragrances. And I don't mean like girly fragrances. I mean, you know, feminine leaning fragrances. Maybe I should clarify. This is something I would rock though because the lemon in here, it's got a, a, a real, kind of like a lemon zesty kind of vibe that which is really nice kind of reminds me of lemon and zest by Killian as far as like the lemon note I like it I really enjoy it I think that this would be a really nice fragrance to wear in the summertime especially very very fresh not at all what I thought it was gonna be and there is like a, a really nice creaminess about this fragrance so if you like sweet fresh fruity full fragrances you definitely want to give this one a try now if you were to purchase the 3.3 or a hundred ml it is a hundred and forty dollars at Sephora that's just where I'm checking right now I don't see a lot of these discounted much from Atelier Cologne I will run up on you know a little bit of a deal here and there that might be a little bit harder one to get a decent deal on but then again you can always sample and I definitely would say sample before you buy all the time but definitely something on this that you might not know would work for you but it's not anything at all like I thought it was it's actually more fruity to me than it is floral. Okay, the next fragrance is a 2020 release that has been getting a little bit of love, which is ironic because the OG really got shat on. I'm talking about Dolce & Gabbana's K Eau de Parfum. Now, I actually enjoyed the Eau de Toilette, or the original, the OG. Uh, a lot of people were not happy about that fragrance at all. They thought that the crown as the cap was very gaudy and kind of looked ratchet or ghetto or however you want to put it. I thought it looked kind of cool. Um, yeah, call me crazy. And the scent profile from what I understand on this one is very, very similar, but there are certain nuances about this fragrance that people like more than they like the OG. But um, from what I understand, it dries down very, very similar. This, uh, go off of first impressions. Maybe, you know, like if I'm like super excited about this for whatever reason, maybe I'll just come back and, you know, do a review, full review on it. But um, yeah, I can't, I'm not gonna like do a time lapse or anything like that. So, uh, oh man, the opening on this is like dynamite. Really, really, really good. Yeah, I mean, I like, I, I, hey, I like the K. I like the K, what can I say? So this one says it's got orange sanguine, lemon, juniper berry, green cardamom and red pepper. Uh, it also has some geranium, lavender, fig, clary sage, cedar, patchouli, vetiver. And I was having a little trouble finding like real details on this. So uh, this is a secondary site because when I actually typed it in, it just gave me like a buttload of information on the OG. So I'm assuming there's not a, an abundance of information on the Eau de Parfum, even though it has been out a little while. But I was also talking to Ashton about this fragrance because he got it. He just recently reviewed it himself and he knew that I liked the K. And he's like, well, if you like K, you're definitely gonna like the Eau de Parfum. And he actually even said, that he enjoyed the opening but I don't think he was jumping for joy or overwhelmed by it or anything and he said that the dry down for him was very similar as the original which for me is gonna be a good thing I dig it uh, that's that's my take uh, you know, as far as first impressions go I like this one better than the OG and just going off of memory because I don't have the uh, EDT with me right now it seems I, I mean just like again, going off of memory, it seems like it's a little better, but then again, it hasn't fully dried down. So 
We'll do a fair assessment, but as far as first impressions go, I'm impressed. Okay, so back in the heat of the summer, I actually broke out a couple of Louis Vuitton fragrances, and one of them was Afternoon Swim. So down in the comments, or actually, I don't, it's either in the comments, somebody hit me up on Instagram, whatever the case may have been, they were telling me about a Bulgari fragrance that smells very similar to Louis Vuitton's Afternoon Swim. And they were actually telling me that it was from Bulgari. So all the Bulgari fragrances I own are relatively cheap. I didn't even know that they have a Le Gem line, which is like a La Vistada Parfum or a Preve, you know, it's like that top shelf, that top tier, which a lot of these brands have. You know, Armani has a Preve, you know, Christian Dior, you know, several designer brands have those top tier level type fragrances. And of course, like Louis Vuitton, just like out the gates, expensive. But when I found out that this fragrance actually cost more than the Louis Vuitton is like, <laughs> okay, you better be doing something special. So I was a very big fan of Afternoon Swim, so I was pretty excited to be able to sample this, especially since it goes for $326 for 100 ml. Holy crap. Yeah, and the uh, bottle looks pretty dope though. Uh, looks like you could probably knock somebody out with it. I haven't actually held it. Uh, looks like it would be a very heavy, wooden type presentation that could be used as a lethal weapon. So I actually have a little bit left of my afternoon swim here. I figured I'd just do a side by side since it seems to be the consensus that Tigar smells very much like Louis Vuitton's afternoon swim. But if they were comparing something that smells very much like it, that costs more. Okay. All right, whatever. Hopefully it'll be better. Otherwise, just get the Louis Vuitton. Something I realized about the Louis Vuitton fragrance, it didn't have a lot of notes. It was very simple, but it really worked. And I looked on this, it's very simple also. It has grapefruit, ambroxan, and woods. I just like smelling it off the cuff. I could tell that it did have that afternoon swim vibe about it, especially on the opening. Yeah, there's, there's definitely uh, similarities, but they are not identical so that's a good thing to be honest with you um just off of first impressions this one actually has a little bit and i'm talking about this one like you know by me holding a freaking decant i'm talking about the bagari tagar it's it has a little more oomph to it than the afternoon swim which afternoon swim is perfect for casual summer afternoons I really love the scent profile. I, that price point is just insane. The citruses on the Louis Vuitton are still very prominent, where the grapefruit just kind of punches you in the nose from the Tigar. But there's also kind of like a muskiness about it. And of course, you know, Ambroxan can kind of give off, you know, like a woodsy or musky vibe, which comes rather quickly. So I would imagine that the Tigar is going to have a lot better performance in Afternoon Swim. So if that's what you like, you know, um, I just, I don't, I personally couldn't justify the 326. I mean, if I could find one on the cheap, uh, the presentation looks cool. I'd like to actually hold one in my hand, you know, but presentation still wouldn't be a selling point if the juice wasn't all that. But um, the thing that kind of threw me off about this, I think somebody said something about this was like really smoky. Yeah. It says, a blissful waft of classic smokiness. I don't get any smoke. Uh, for me, smoky fragrances are like Tyrannosaurus Rex, or there's even a little bit of smokiness to uh, the vanilla in Memoirs of a Trespasser from Imaginary Authors, or A City on Fire. That's smoke, that's real smoke. Uh, I don't really get any smoke in this, so um, don't let that mislead you. It is very much a fresh, sexy is I'll get out citrus fragrance and what I can tell from it drying down I don't think that it's going to uh, be like a big evolver I mean basically you know with grapefruit and ambroxan and woods being pretty much it on the note breakdown it's not going to have a lot of evolution. If they could have held that grapefruit in a little bit longer, I think I would have liked that a little bit better. But if you want like a, a sexier version that has a really nice muskiness about it and you like Afternoon Swim, 
you just might want to sample Tigar. So I know I'm running a little bit behind on some of these releases. As a matter of fact, I think that Tigar was released like in 2016 and here it is 2020 and I didn't even know that Bagari had the Le Gem line. That's something new to me. So I, I'm still learning. You know, all of us are learning all the time. So yeah, I'm, I'm rather impressed with that. I'm rather impressed with the K. I'm glad I got to smell Osmanthus finally. Me thinks I would totally rock that mon. And uh, the Polar Red, not bad either. But again, I would recommend sampling before you buy, before you pull the trigger on any of these fragrances. So overall, not a bad haul. If there's any fragrances that I just did my first impressions on that you would like to see a full review on, let me know down in the comments. Or if you've tried any of these or want to try any of these, also, drop me a line down in the comments. Until next time, I'll see you on Carolina Fragrance Reviews.